Welcome to the third episode of Another Week in the Books. In the week of April 29th through May 5th, 2019, I talk about some of my book thoughts, books I'm reading, books I finished, books I added to the reading list, books I heard on podcasts, and the stats for this week. So let's get into it. And let's start this week with book thoughts. The first book, I actually finished this book. It's a graphic novel called Thanos Infinity Abyss. It's by the Marvel Comics. And it's part of an 18-book series. And what book came to mind while reading this was Fight Club. They made a movie about this book, but the book is really good. And it was similar because Thanos created a lot of clones of himself. And then someone came in and put on some programming that eventually would lead to the destruction of the world. So Thanos kind of had to be the good guy in this story where he had to fight himself, different clones of himself that were had different aspects of themselves that were better. One were more intelligent, one more strong, more just different aspects of him that create himself but they're separated each in a different person so it was a difficult battle for him and fight club reminded me of that because the narrator created through schizophrenia another side of himself called tyler durden and then he went around creating other people similar to himself with beliefs and ideologies and then those beliefs and ideologies ended up becoming bigger and something else that he didn't really want and it was becoming destructive and needed to be stopped so he was fighting himself just in fight club he tyler durden was was himself and he was fighting himself and other clones of himself and thanos was doing the same thing and that's the book that came to mind the second is i finished this book also called the own unwinding of a of the miracle and it reminded me of a book i read called the last lecture by randy posh And they're similar because both authors were in their last days dying because of a cancer. And they both had kids. And that was, I have kids and I just naturally put myself in that place of like not being able to be there for the weddings and the graduations. Those hard moments when they need you and you try to encourage them. And those good moments where they're doing great things. Just being involved in their life, it makes me really like, wow, I'm so lucky. And I, and, I, and I pray and I hope that I'm there and I don't have that pain of, you know, not seeing that, not experience that, just being more grateful. On the other side of that, though, reading these type of books kind of, the way I would describe it is some people who go to mission trips and they come back to the United States and they get upset at people that are complaining about their food not being warm enough or not tasting right and their drinks not being right, made right. So they get upset because they're in this environment where people are so grateful for the food that doesn't look so appeasing that an American would be like, what is this garbage or what is this? this look... So it gets you upset because you're like, what are you complaining about? I just came from a country where people will be so happy and blessed to be in this situation. They would not be complaining. And I feel the same way when after I read books like this, The Unwinding of the Miracle, where, like, the internet, the Wi-Fi went away for a couple hours because there was a, a heavy storm and a tree must have fell on some lines or something. But my kids were all freaking out, complaining and upset that the Wi-Fi is down. And I'm like, ah, you know, there's this lady who was on her last dying days and she had to experience these things and the kids and the husband. And you guys, you don't know how blessed you are. So it's upsetting, but I have to learn how to control that because they don't take the time to you know, learn and create the empathy and experience how really good we have it and how grateful we should be. The next book is The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I like this one because... Or this one made me think of Educated, uh, a book similar, because the fathers in, bo- in both these books messed up their kids' childhood. And in Educated... The father was this crazy conspiracy theorist who wouldn't let their kids go to school. 
made them work dangerous jobs that almost killed them. And the next book would be A Child Called It. And this one, the mom was abusive to the kid, made him eat feces and his own throw up and never fed him and beat him hard and made him smell ammonia in a locked room. Terrible things. And the father was complicit on this one where he was like, don't piss your mom off. And he ended up leaving and then educated. The mom was complicit saying, it's okay. Don't, don't get your dad upset. Don't do things, you know, and, and allowing him to be the way he is. Glass House is the same way where the father had all these opportunities to take their family out of poverty and not have to run away and have good jobs that he messed up. He drank a lot and would drink all the money. They were trying to save money. He would steal. You know, there's terrible things that he, these kids had to experience, and it's not fair. But just like the boy in the striped pajamas where his father was a part of the Nazis and he, he had to go to a concentration camp and the boy had to live there while his dad worked on these camps. So the, what I saw is that, man, there's some people who live in unfair situations and it sucks. And just that saying where, like, you know, life is hard. Life is not fair. Those, say, those sayings come to life when you read books like this. And it brings a lot of, you know, gratefulness, more gratefulness in me that I, I wasn't born into these situations. Like, feel lucky almost. Now, books I am reading right now is uh, Thanos Redemption. This is my continuous journey in finishing 18 graphic novels on the Infinity Gauntlet series. Another book I'm reading is The Everything Store by Brad Stone. This is an amazing book. I'm almost finished. I loved it all the way. Amazon has been through a lot itself. Jeff Bezos has been through a lot. And I learned a lot about the company. It's a great book. Heart of Darkness is a book I'm reading. I'm trying to read more novels. This is a classic. I haven't read classics because I'm a high school dropout. never read any books when I was young. So I'm trying to get those under my belt. The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. This one has been great. This one reminds me a lot of Educated, uh, The Glass House. Really good book. I enjoyed it. It's one of the most talked about, highly rated books out right now. Can't wait to finish this one. Now, books I have finished. I finished this week The Unwinding of the Miracle by Julie Yip Williams. I already talked about this one a little bit earlier where I was talking about books I was thinking about while reading another book. And this book is a hard one because she was born in Vietnam blind and her grandmother just, you know, I don't know why humans do this, but thought it was the best interest of her own daughter to kill her granddaughter because it would just be a hard life for her grandfather and her family. And nothing good is going to come out by having someone, a kid that is blind. And luckily she had... Some, it didn't happen, and her great-great-grandmother, the mother of the grandmother, got involved and told her to stop doing it and don't kill this child. And then she ends up moving to the yes. That's a crazy story in itself. She jumps on this boat where there's cannibals and people are dying because they're going from Vietnam to China in these crazy boats. Kind of what's going on in Libya, people going on these boats, or Cuba and dying. She had to go through that. She survived that, gets to America is able to get a Harvard degree from law, their law school, able to get a good job, able to get a husband, able to have kids. So her life is this great redemption, like a, a reason why not to like, you know, take a child's life because you never know what can come out of it, especially under dire circumstances like she went through. And she ends up getting a a cancer that's metastasis. I guess, you know, it's just, you're dead. There's nothing you can do. You just, you only can prolong it. And then this is most of the story, telling her life, finding out that, you know, they were trying to kill her when she was younger, all these things. It's just crazy emotional roller coaster of her talking about, you know, thinking about another woman raising her children, another woman being with her ma- uh, husband, and just one of those books where it makes you think like, wow, that must be a tough experience to go through. Not only for her, the one who is dying, but her family members and thinking about them and everything she's going to miss. So It's a good book. It's only it's also I think it came out this year and it's very well talked about. I liked it. I like these type of books. 
The next one I finished this week was uh, The Thano Infinity Abyss by Jim Starlin. That's the graphic novel. <coughs> this one was really good. Weird seeing Thanos, who's usually the guy who's trying to destroy the universe, help to save the universe, although he's he has helped. But this way, this time he was the main, I want to say, hero of the story. He was fighting himself, which is pretty, you know, has a lot of psychology behind it. Where, you know, truth that you're fighting yourself, you're your own enemy. And basically you could say, you know, you live in your own little universe and, you know, those little parts of yourself are trying to destroy you. Deep stuff. The other book I finished was The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. This book was really good because he expressed the innocence of children because I have children and children are so innocent. And it's expressed in this book in an amazing way where the child doesn't even know he's in a concentration camp, doesn't know what's going on with this whole Nazi thing, doesn't know what goes on inside concentration camps. He's just oblivious and like, what's going on? Why did we move? And why are people dress like this? And who's this guy coming in here? And, tell, and why is everybody freaking out? And he was very ignorant. And they were trying to shelter him from every the truth because he was young and he would go to a fence every day and meet this kid and listen to this kid's horrible story of 11 people living in one room. There was a bully in there, beat him up. Some days he would show up with a black, very hard story. And he, he became really good friends and he would bring them food. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Like the story of friendship that that's in this book, the story of the innocence of a child and also intertwined on this is You know, what parents do to their kids, they shelter them. So, you know, there's a good, valid reason why you don't tell a 9-year-old or 10-year-old what's going on inside these concentration camps. I get it. So that's why he didn't really know what's going on. But at the same time, his, his father chose to be part of this thing that was killing a lot of people, innocent people, people who really weren't doing anything, children and women. So the story ends, you know, spoiler alert, um, the, his, the kid on the other side, going on the other side to run away with, with the other kid, and they end up inside one of the gas chambers, his own son, and he kills his own son. The, um, and it's like, well, you reap what you sow, karma, you know, you get it. You, I understood, like, damn. You know, if it wasn't his father, and, you know, I had this battle, like, was it okay? Was this justice? But it's a kid that you grew to like and understand, and he actually didn't judge this other kid or see the other other kid as a Jew, as this person that he wanted to kill and hated, and he was superior, and they were inferior. He didn't view that relationship, and he ended up, you know, dying because of this friendship, and he died to the end, you know, the way he describes it, holding his hand, and it was a hard thing for me to read, and me <clears throat> afterwards I was thinking, like, I don't know what to think of this story because I'm sad for this child, but it, also the consequences of his father, what he does, you know, you kind of feel justice happen, but I don't know, I'm still battling on that book. So books I added to the reading list this week, not a lot. That's a good thing because my reading list is at a point where I'll probably never finish all the books. I probably won't even get to, like... I got like thousands of books in there. and I, Even if I read 200 a book and I continue to add and I reread books, I feel like I'll never get there. So I added this week a comedy sex, comedy sex God by Pete Holmes. I saw this book on <clears throat> Ryan Holiday. He's an author I like. Obstacle is the way. Ego is the enemy. He writes really good books. He, he took a picture of it on his Instagram stories and said, you know, he loved the book. And that was enough for me because... Ryan Holiday is an author and like, and so I put on my reading list. Another one was A Brief History of Everything by Ken Wilber. That was through a podcast that I was listening to that Mark Manson, the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, those are one of the three books that are formative to him, shaped him, very important to him. And I was like, oh, let me check it out. So moving on to books on podcasts or authors on podcasts. I'm going to reference what I just referenced, which is the Three Books Podcast. That's what it's called. And Mark Manson was on there, the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And he talked about three books. Number one book was uh, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. 
I've read Ayn Rand's a lot of her essays, and I watched the Atlas Shrug movie that's like three DVDs. I liked it. I've read half of the book, and then I stopped reading it because it's a big book. I need to finish it. And I like the book. I know there's a lot of controversy behind the book because it's a, a, her th- philosophy, objectivism, very selfish, is viewed as very selfish and not caring. There's certain things that I like about her philosophy and I agree with. <clears throat> and he that was one of the books that really helped him earlier in his life. Another one was that Brief History of Everything by Kill Wilbur. You know, he admired that this guy was well-read and he can explain crazy things. And then the last one was Infinite Jest, I think he talked about, by David Foster Wallace. And he loves this guy. He, If you listen to the podcast, he just in love with David Foster Wallace. Wallace. I read, the only book I've read by David Foster Wallace is, this is Water, which is short, 100 pages. It was good. It's pretty deep. Probably my mind can't grasp around that yet. I'll probably read it a couple more times. But I do want to read that Infinite Jest, just because it's a book that I've seen a lot of people recommend. It's a thousand pages. It'll probably be a good one to put under your belt. So that's it for the podcasts and the statistics uh, for the month. I've, I'm at two books for the month. I've read 400 pages this month. And for the year 2019, I've read 76 books. And for the year pages is 18,877. So that's it for this week. See you next week. See you later.